<laughs> what was it like serving with JD? <laughs> I didn't like JD, honestly. I was uh, I was a medic uh, for you know, HHC, 1st 502nd Headquarters Unit. Uh, he was a scout in CO, and uh, I, I was just an E4 medic. And uh, JD was really good friends and had deployed with another medic um, that was there with us at Ashake. And uh, JD's favorite thing would be to come into my aid station and uh, wrestle me, just throw me onto the floor and beat my ass. <laughs> that, was, that was my first experience with JD. JD was, I mean, he was always like, he was a hard charger. Um, the dude never stopped. Um, after mission, I mean, he was in the gym. Um, when he wasn't in the gym, he was probably kicking my ass again. Um, I mean, JD is just, I mean, you can tell now with what he's doing with Mohawk Outdoors, the dude's never, never stopped. He's just, he's a hard charger. September 2010, JD were on one of the largest um, missions in Af the A OEF war. Um, it was Operation Dragon Strike. September 2010, Operation Dragon Strike kicked off in southern Kandahar, Afghanistan, where Cap and I were involved in the largest movement in Afghan history. I'll never forget the Air Force coming in and they're dropping these, I don't even know what kind of bombs they were, but they went into the ground and they were used to detonate IEDs that were in the area. And I remember hearing on this radio countdown, three, two, one, and then all of a sudden the ground starts shaking and boom and all this explosions and stuff start going off all over the place where there was IEDs built and just the vibration from those bombs going off it was causing IEDs to explode all over the place. The whole thing about Operation Dragon Strike was to eliminate all the Taliban outposts in southern Kandahar. So it was one massive attack by the U.S. Armed Forces to hit every single village in, in southern Kandahar that was occupied by Taliban. You would hear stories that there would be four Taliban to 400 Taliban in these villages. So when the Air Force dropped these bombs and they started going off and it was time to, it was, it was wartime. We're running into these villages and there's alleyways and, and mud huts and dudes popping around corners shooting at you and, and IEDs that you still have to worry about, you know, you, and you know, it just turned into this massive long, long day engagement basically. It was a Taliban occupied village there literally trying to get out of the village and they're getting caught in a complex ambush basically by my guys and my buddy Cap and his team that are fighting from the opposite side of the village and we're in this massive gunfight literally trying to get all the Taliban out of this village that this mission ended up lasting an entire month of just straight fighting back and forth with the Taliban. As soon as, as, soon as the operation began my, my team ended up hitting one side of this village while Cap and his teams were hitting the other side of this village and we're in this massive gunfight and I'm operating in a smaller element and we end up taking over half this town and moving into a mud hut to chill out Why Charlie Company, we didn't want to get in their way while they were hitting the other side of this village. So I, I literally just told my team to take this great putt over, we went inside of it and I told them to take their helmets off and relax until we got further word of what, what we needed to do that day. We had split up to take over the, this, this town where there was a, it was supposed to be the largest Taliban stronghold um, in our in Zari district in the area that we were in. And um, uh, we were clearing houses and we came through. We were uh, walking through this wadi and we came to this graveyard and um, JD's uh, the scouts were just on the other side of that wadi. Um, so as we're walking through the graveyard, um, my platoon sergeant stopped me because he had seen a shovel. And he said, the last time I had seen a shovel in Iraq, Jared, and he, he stopped and the IED went off. And as soon as I pop my helmet off and I'm inside this mud room, I hear an explosion. and, and Every time you'd hear an explosion, it was never a good feeling because you knew what we were doing. 
And if you hear an explosion close by, you probably know it's one of your buddies that just got got hit. And uh, it was exactly that. I remember hearing the explosion inside this compound I was in, the dust lifting up all, all, all over the place. You could see nothing. And my platoon started running up saying, Williams, I need you to take your team. An entire squad from Cobra Element is down and they need to get out of there to an LZ. And uh, getting told that something like that, you don't know what you're walking into. It's You got so many thoughts going through your head of who it is and how bad is it. I had, I had no idea what I was getting myself into. And I start getting my team spun up and we start running out the gates to our to where Cap's located. And uh, we're in this gunfight. And I got five dudes with me and we're in a village moving as fast as we can to get to our guys because we don't know if they're bleeding out or someone's dead or what. And I come up on the Argandoff River and I remember just getting ready to stick my legs in and I have some cobra element that's still like there in their heads saying, please stop, there's possible secondaries in the, in the area. And I start moving my team across to get to where Cap is and as and soon as we show up, thank God it wasn't as bad it was still bad. There was an entire squad that was shell-shocked, and if you don't know what shell-shocked is, it's when your soul's completely gone and you're a walking corpse. And that's basically what all these guys were. There were dudes with jaws blown up and people peppered real bad, and Cap was one of them. And I remember grabbing him, and he's, he's shell-shocked. He's got shrapnel that went through his legs and stuff, and I gotta get him where I just fought all the way through this village to get to him. I gotta get him back through that stuff to where my the rest of my Mohawk elements located to get him on a bird and get him get him to safety. When you when you see a person shell shocked, it's 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 scary because they're un, someone shell shocked is unpredictable. They can be violent. They could just be completely gone, and you're hoping their soul comes back into their body and they're gonna be all right. When I saw Cap and the look in his eyes, it was like looking into a serial killer where you don't see any emotions, nothing. He is completely gone. His soul, cap, the cap that I know is off walking around in the jungle and the cap that I have is like a walking dead corpse. And when you deal with guys with shell shock, it can be extremely dangerous because they can get violent. You don't know when that concussion rips through their body you don't know if they have internal bleeding or anything like that, and there's just so much to it that that makes it terrifying. I don't, I'm not, I don't recall a lot. <clears throat> we called for help. The scouts came over, and uh, the, the, I, I, I don't remember it, but JD told me um, he could see it. Like I wasn't, I wasn't there. I was so impacted by it. Um, and JD actually carried me off the battlefield and, and into safety. He uh, probably saved my life, man. So I grab Cap and we start moving our way back through the village. Dude, I'm, I'm very point man for my team and I'm sh shooting at guys behind a wall and I'll never forget letting go of Cap at one point and looking over and he's walking off out in a place where there could be more IEDs or you know, getting shot at by the enemy. And I didn't want that happening. I had run and grab him and we just kept making our way all the way through and we got capped to a, an LZ. And at that point I was, I was a lot of stress was away because you're trying to take six, seven dudes that are all wounded really bad and they're, they're out of the fight. They're, you don't want them picking up a gun at this point. And you're getting them to a helicopter and then you get the word that you had to go back to pick up two KIA that you didn't even know about. So I had to fight my way back through the village again, get to where the KIA were, just so when by the time the helicopter came to pick up our guys, I could have the, these two KIA back at the LZ to fly them off as well. The mortar element that was attached to us and my scout element that I was with, we weren't happy that we had to send Cap off to this other element that we weren't really fighting alongside with at the time. And we had to send Cap because their medic was injured over there. And when that when that IED hit, it impacted the mortar platoon and my scout platoon a lot because we saw Cap every day and we saw the good work that he was doing with the locals and, and our brothers that were fighting alongside him. 
that's why we called him Jesus. And when you find out Jesus gets wounded, it's it's devastating for everybody because he's he's a big key instrument in what we're trying to accomplish over there. And and knowing that we're putting him on a helicopter to send him out of there, it was uh, it was extremely devastating for my for for all of us because we didn't have our 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 golden boy medic with us anymore. A couple weeks after Cap got injured. Uh, I unfortunately stepped on an IED a couple weeks afterwards and uh, lost both my legs and my right arm and, and Cap and I never served on a battlefield again. And the last time I got to see him was the day he was getting home from Afghanistan walking off that airplane. I was right there in my stubby prosthetics hugging everybody that I served with when they were getting off that plane and I went back to Texas and I never got to see the guys again.